Chapter 10 Now the Lord said to Moses, Make two trumpets of beaten silver to be used for summoning the people to assemble and for signaling the breaking of camp. When both trumpets are blown, the people will know that they are to gather before you at the entrance of the tabernacle. But if only one is blown, then only the leaders of the tribes of Israel will come to you. When you sound the signal to move on, the tribes on the east side of the tabernacle will break camp and move forward. When you sound the signal a second time, the tribes on the south will follow. You must sound short blasts to signal moving on. But when you call the people to an assembly, blow the trumpets using a different signal. Only the priests, Aaron's descendants, are allowed to blow the trumpets. This is a permanent law to be followed from generation to generation. When you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies, you must sound the alarm with these trumpets, so the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness too, sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month to rejoice over your burnt offerings and peace offerings. The trumpets will remind the Lord your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. One day in mid-spring, during the second year after Israel's departure from Egypt, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle of the covenant. So the Israelites set out from the wilderness of Sinai and traveled on in stages until the cloud stopped in the wilderness of Paran. When the time to move arrived, the Lord gave the order through Moses. The tribes that camped with Judah headed the march with their banner under the leadership of Nashon, son of Aminadab. The tribe of Issachar was led by Nathanael, son of Zuan. The tribe of Zebulun was led by Eliab, son of Helon. Then the tabernacle was taken down, and the Gershonite and Merarite divisions of the Levites were next in the line of march, carrying the tabernacle with them. Then the tribes that camped with Reuben set out with their banner under the leadership of Eliezer, son of Shedeur. The tribe of Simeon was led by Shelumiel, son of Zerushadai. The tribe of God was led by Eliasaf, son of Deuel. Next came the Kohathite division of the Levites carrying the sacred objects from the tabernacle. When they arrived at the next camp, the tabernacle would already be set up at its new location. Then the tribes that camped with Ephraim set out with their banner under the leadership of Elishama, son of Amahud. The tribe of Manasseh was led by Gamaliel, son of Perizur. The tribe of Benjamin was led by Abidon, son of Gideoni. Last of all, the tribes that camped with Dan set out under their banner. They served as the rear guard for all the tribal camps. The tribe of Dan headed this group under the leadership of Ahizar, son of Amishadai. The tribe of Asher was led by Pajiel, son of Okran. The tribe of Naphtali was led by Ahira, son of Enan. This was the order in which the tribes marched, division by division. One day Moses said to his brother-in-law Hobab, son of Reuel the Midianite, We are on our way to the promised land. Come with us and we will treat you well, for the Lord has given wonderful promises to Israel. But Hobab replied, No, I will not go. I must return to my own land and family. Please don't leave us, Moses pleaded. You know the places in the wilderness where we should camp. Come, be our guide, and we will share with you all the good things that the Lord does for us. They marched for three days after leaving the mountain of the Lord, with the Ark of the Lord's Covenant moving ahead of them to show them where to stop and rest. As they moved on each day, the cloud of the Lord hovered over them, and whenever the Ark set out, Moses would cry, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee before you. And when the Ark was set down, he would say, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel.